So Ravel Calasso um, uh, is going to just bring up his presentation now. Uh, he's going to go through a couple of cases to illustrate uh, some of the challenges when there is significant residual disease in skull base called M1 chondrosarcoma for, for the proton radiotherapist. Uh, we've also got on this, this panel uh, uh, Sean Raza with a unique experience from the large complex patient series uh, at MD Anderson uh, and also Paul Gardner who uh, we all saw a fantastic talk from earlier and has really been instrumental uh, along with the rest of the Pet Pittsburgh team uh, in, in educating the rest of the world and developing new techniques in, in, uh, in endoscopic skull based surgery which have changed management for, for patients all around the world. This is a 57 year old lady from an outside institution with a long history of headaches. Um, finally had an MR scan, scan done and you can see this extensive tumor at the skull base um, on the left side there. Now, as I said, um, quite an extensive tumor tethered to the brainstem involving uh, the petrous apex, uh, bony instruction of the clivus and more importantly, tethered to the brainstem. And like I said, she underwent uh, four surgeries at another institution before she was referred to us, uh, two endoscopic uh, and two, I think, open and histology consistent with a grade two chondrosarcoma. Here you can see uh, the yellow outline is a kind of composite of the gross tumor volume from uh, what was removed over the course of four surgeries. And you can see the orange uh, line just shows you kind of what was the residual remaining when the patient came to us. And as you can see here, this patient still has residual tumor very close to the brainstem, probably about a millimeter or two away. And this obviously presents a challenge for us, as Jill outlined, when we're trying to cover these um, uh, cases, the high radiation dose. So I think we've got a poll question, but bearing in mind that this patient uh, still has residual tumor, would people consider another operation or would they refer to a protons at this time? There we go, it's about 50-50, about slightly more in favor of protons. <laughs> Good. Okay, so the challenges that we face in outlining this case, well, obviously, it's a patient with multiple surgeries, so it's difficult for us as oncologists to know exactly where the con points of contact were and the extent of the disease at each surgery, uh, which we're going to have to cover in our high dose radiation volume. Sometimes with the imaging, as Rika pointed out earlier, we may have a lack of some fats out of thin slice imaging at certain points, and Jill showed you the importance of how that affects our contouring. And finally, as in this case, we have, we, we have uh, points where imaging is missing. So this particular patient had um, a second surgery and a third surgery, but there was no imaging in between. And therefore, when we're trying to plan that, it becomes very difficult to know, did the tumor grow? Did it contact another point that we don't know about? What the extent was at the after the second operation? So it's very important to have imaging you know, at, at the various time points and the right imaging, as has been said before. Now, as Joe showed you, this is a case of where we're trying to get high dose into the brain, into the tumor here. So the green line represents the kind of lower risk area that we're trying to get 54 gray and 30 fractions to. And the dark blue line represents the higher dose area, the high risk area that we want to get a high dose in to try and control this type of disease. And the orange is the gross, is the remaining tumor here. And what you can see again is that it's very close to the brain stem. This is roughly how we would treat with three beams coming across and in different ways, um, one, two, and three. But what you can see here is, as Jill showed earlier, we want to make sure that we're very, very tight to the brainstem. So this shows our 63 gray line, very tight to the brainstem, trying to keep as much dose coming into the tumors and the high, high risk area as possible, whilst um, trying to maintain uh, the dose to that brainstem which is really our kind of limiting factor. But why is it means them? Obviously, as Jill talked about the fact that we need tumors for tumor control. And what you can see here where the arrow is showing you is, is the area where we have to actually compromise on the, the high dose. So we'd like to get 95% of the dose into this dark blue line here, proximity of gross tumor to the brainstem. We're actually even compromising gross tumor coverage here to achieve satisfactory dose to the brainstem to, to reduce the risk of treatment toxicity. And so here it's just, it's just underlines the fact that if, you, if we have more distance here, we can get more dose into gross where gross tumor is. Um, a quick question, would anyone's opinion change uh, if this was a chordoma over a chondrosarcoma? 
So this is just another case. This is a case of a cordoma. So uh, uh, from another another one from an outside institution that came to us, um, a young man with no past medical history, um, a, but then who presented with acute visceral loss and had an MR scan that showed this tumor that you can see here. You can just see the tumor uh, in uh, three dimensions here. Um, I'll just briefly tumor. intervene just to say so it did change uh, about sixty percent of people's view that they would have proceeded with further surgery for cordoma. Um, versus 40% who would have gone for yeah. protein. That's, that's interesting. Thanks, Gomar. Um, so the patient underwent uh, an endoscopic uh, surgery um, at their local institution. But what you can see here is that, that um, after the surgery, there was still some residual left behind. So the orange shows the initial tumor, and the green shows the tumor that was left behind. Uh, the patient was referred to us. Uh, histology uh, was consistent with cordoma. Um, it was, wasn't too differentiated. Um, sorry, I've kind of given away what, what happened next, but <laughs> my next question is what would you do next? So sorry. <laughs> so the patient was referred to us, um, um, but we actually said that we felt that the disease was too close to the brainstem and asked if the patient could have a further surgery. Um, and so before the, the second surgery, the patient had another scan which actually showed growth of the tumor here um, and you can see that in red so the after the first surgery is shown in green and the actual growth relative to that is shown in red here and it's compressing the brain stem so the patient underwent a further surgery again endoscopically and thankfully everything was removed this time and then the patient was referred to us for protons now this hopefully illustrates the reason why we obviously especially in cordoma want um, to get clear of Crohn's disease, similar to the case before. Um, what you can see here is the dark blue and the, the uh, areas, the high risk area we want to cover to 95% of 73 plus gray. And we're obviously limited by the brainstem tolerance here, but actually we can model roughly what this gross tumor would have got had it remained in situ and we treated it with protons. And this number in the bottom right here, 55, 55.8 um, gray, is roughly what it would have got. Now, obviously, the, the brainstem flops back after an operation, so um, it, a little bit, so it kind of would have got a little bit more than that, but it would only have got approximately 60 gray um, if it had remained in situ and we tried to treat this with protons. And as Joe mentioned earlier, that's going to have a significant effect on the control rate of the disease if we've got gross tumor left very close to the brainstem. Um, the other thing we want to talk about is when, as oncologists, we may have to compromise if disease is left close to the chiasm. So on the left, you have the case that I've just presented. And what you can see is was the initial, in the red here, the initial gross disease. And the dark blue area is the high risk area that we're trying to treat to high dose. And this color wash just shows you 95% of the radiation dose. And you can see, obviously, we will always compromise a bit um, right near the brainstem. But you can see here the chiasm at the top here, and you can see that there's we've managed to get higher radiation dose in because this tumor was well away from the chiasm and the gross disease was well was well removed. I said institution that, that this bit of tumor has actually been removed. But if we look at where it was originally, if that was still gross disease very close to the chiasm, you can see that we'd be heavily compromising dose, and that would um, significantly influence the control in this area. So in summary. Um, as oncologists, a thin slice imaging done pre and post each operation is really helpful for us when it comes to radiation planning. Sometimes more surgeries can make things more complex in terms of planning. That's good if a patient needs it, that's great, but so obviously sometimes it may be that a referral to consider protons earlier may be better, and may make the proton planning a bit better. And obviously, as was uh, discussed earlier, without a sufficient gap, it makes um, the, the treatment or achieving high doses to gross tumor very hard. Um, and then we, if we have to compromise, we can significantly reduce local control. 